Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here. My last two videos have been about my 2023 no buy year. Part of the reason I have decided to do a no buy this year for those categories that I am most susceptible to making impulsive decisions around is because I struggle with moderation. The best thing in the long run for me would be if I could learn to budget. However, I am not particularly good at budgeting. I have been trying it in some way, shape or form for the last few years and it has been a massive fail. This year, I need to learn to budget. All of the details for why and the thought processes and all of that are in those last two videos, so I will link them up, you can go and check them out. But this year, I really need to just get the hang of it. So I'm hoping that sharing it here on YouTube, being honest with you guys about it and checking in and being held accountable in a sense will help me to manage it. My hope is that if I can learn to manage it this year, that going forward, I will be able to reintroduce fashion and beauty shopping into my day-to-day -day life, but in a controlled way through a budget, if I can learn how to budget. Fingers crossed. So that is the ideal outcome basically from this side of the project, which is the budgeting side, is it's almost like this is a soft run, having taken the temptation of those two categories that I am most sort of susceptible to out of the equation. This is me learning to budget with stuff that hopefully, although it's still stuff that I like, it's still things that I am prone to overspending on, or even if it's not things that I like, it's things that I mindlessly overspend on that I'm trying to control. So it is things that I will struggle with, I think, but it's hopefully things that I'm not going to struggle with as much as I would struggle if I was trying to introduce fashion and beauty shopping into it this year. So that is the aim of the game with the budgeting project. So let's get into what is going to be covered by my budget in 2023. In terms of how the budget is going to work, First of all, the budget itself will be £250 a month. I am trying, this is possibly going to sound a little bit contradictory, it is a yearly budget and if annually over the year I manage to make it so that I've spent averagely £250 a month and have come in under budget or on budget by the end of the year, I will be happy with that. But I am trying to not think of it as a flexible yearly budget. I am trying to think of it as £250 a month so that I'm not going to blow £1,000 in the first month and then have leave myself short for the rest of the year because I know that's what I will do if I think about it too flexibly. So I'm trying to not think of it too flexibly but I'm also trying to think of it flexibly enough that if I go over one month I can try and pull it back in the next month without writing the whole project off as a fail because that is where, that is kind of where my mind goes. I think that's why a no buy year suits me more than a low buy because I'm either doing something or I'm not. I like very, very clear rules. And the problem for me is that once I've kind of broken a rule or kind of gone over something, I'll be a bit like, oh well, it's broken now. So boom, we're off and running down the path that I am trying not to tread on. If I do go over one month, I don't want it to be the end of the world. I don't want that to be the opening for me to chuck away the entire project and I really don't want to be doing this from a place of punishment, from a place of beating myself up because I've done that before and I, I don't really think it works for most people. I think I need to keep in focus that the reason I am doing this, although it's difficult and challenging and uncomfortable and I am putting myself through something that is all of those things. All change comes from leaving your comfort zone. That's what I want to remember, that's how I want to approach it, is that this is not about punishment, although it might feel like that at times. It is about trying to reach a higher kind of existence. That sounds a bit spiritual. I don't really mean it's not higher existence, that's probably not the right... Um. It kind of is and isn't the right way to put it. What I really mean is that I know my life will overall be better and happier if I am financially in control of it, which might in the short term feel like I'm having to deprive myself of things, but it's ultimately so that I've got greater financial flexibility in the future. And I've gone through all of that in my why I'm doing a no buy year in 2023. And although this is not the no buy side of it, it ultimately still supports that goal. Ultimately, it's for my own good. I don't want it to be about punishing myself. So if I go over within a month, as long as I can pull it back so that overall for the whole year, 
I have come in in budget. I will be okay with that. But I do want to think of it as £250 that almost like releases to me on the first of every month rather than thinking of it as a yearly budget from the get-go so that I don't spend too much up front and then panic, then leave myself short for a while, then become completely disgruntled with it and just give up. So we're thinking about it flexibly but not too flexibly. That's the approach. I do not want to borrow from the next month. I want to be within my £250 for each month. And ideally, if I know I'm going to have a really expensive month, so say Christmas, for example, there's always a lot more socialising. Maybe the couple of months before Christmas, I want to be underspending so that I can roll forward. Because I do want to be able to roll forward. I'm trying not to pull forward in terms of money that I have not yet gone into the month of. I don't want to spend the next month's money before it arrives, but I could roll over from the previous months and have a higher budget to start the next month with once that £250 releases and adds on to whatever is not spent from the previous month. So that's how I'm approaching the actual monthly budget itself. Now obviously the budget is £250 a month and it's for non-essential spend, so the budget is not covering things like my travel to work or like my supermarket shop or whatever. That's not coming from this budget, this is my sort of disposable income frivolous expenditure budget in a sense. The first category that it's covering is beauty services. So quite self-explanatory, if I get my hair done, my nails done, anything kind of related to beauty that is a service, the cost of that service has to come from my budget. The next category is beauty service replacement items. So that would be if, for example, I decided I'm not going to be dyeing my hair at home because I actually went down that route and ended up, I had to get a lot chopped off my hair last year and, you know, it's it's growing a bit now actually, but it was really, really short in comparison to how it, but it still is very short in comparison to how it was, but it was so not in great condition so I don't really want to go down that route but you know anything that I'm kind of buying that would replace a service so you know if I'm buying razors for example rather than getting waxed that would come out of beauty service replacement items from my budget. The next thing that has to come from my budget are beauty replacements so if you watched last week's video which was my 2023 no buy year outlines I am allowed to buy replacements this year in my no buy so long as I don't have an alternative to the thing that I have finished. So it has to be a true one in one out replacement and I'm not allowed to replace things just because I like the one that I finished. So say for example, I've got 19 cleansers. If I finish one and I really like it, I can't just replace it whilst I have another 18 already in my stash to use. So it will only be items that I'm truly down to the very last of and it's one in one out and those replacement items need to come from my budget. I am aware as I get closer to being in control of my beauty inventories, my expenditure on replacements is going to go up because there are more categories that will be down to being a quantity of one that when I finish the item, I need to replace it. As those categories ramp up, that's more and more replacements that I am buying each year, but I do not want that expense to suddenly become huge so I would like it to be coming from my budget. The next category in my budget is socialising so going out for dinner, going out for drinks, even if it's just out for coffee or whatever. I think that's a category that I can very easily start overspending on. I have seen me going out for lunch and then we get a bottle of wine with lunch then we move on somewhere else and get a couple of cocktails. Even if I'm just drinking soft drinks like that all really adds up when you're out and about. So that is something that I want to be taking from my budget. The next category is work lunches because I spend far too much money buying lunch at work rather than bringing my lunch in from home. So I have my supermarket shop which is not coming out of my budget because that is my essential. I plan in lunches generally and buy stuff for lunches in that shop and then I just go and I don't lift it in the mornings and then I end up going and buying a meal deal. and. I think we all know there's a cost of living crisis, inflation is mad, a meal deal that was £3 a year ago is now £5. So that was already adding up pre-inflation, it's now adding up even more quickly. So that is definitely something that I want to be capping, which is why it is in my budget. The next category is experiences, anything that's 
not necessarily socialising in the sense of kind of going out for food or whatever. Um, and it could be experiences that I am going to with friends or alone. But by that I mean things like theatre tickets, day trips. I got very into coach trips over the last year really. Lauren and I actually went on one to Liverpool and Manchester in Christmas 2021. I sometimes get myself mixed up when it's the run up to Christmas because it's the end of the year. Um, so yeah, Christmas 2021, Lauren and I went on one. She'd been on a few before then and she really recommended them. So she and I went on one and they are great. Like they're brilliant value for money, these coach trips, you know, for like a hundred pounds basically, you get a night in a hotel, you get taken and returned, you know, the actual coach travel. You tend to get your dinner as well, you know, and you get to see and go to places that are maybe not the most accessible by train or that you absolutely could not access for the same kind of money by train. So they are brilliant. I think they are great, but they do add up. And I, I have definitely got a tendency to, if something is a bit of a bargain, I'm getting so much for my money that it's as if it doesn't count, that I've not spent any money. But if I go, say the coach trip itself was £100, like, okay, it's, it's great value for money for what I'm getting, but still £100. And then obviously you might get your dinner with the coach trip, but you're probably buying lunch. Depending on where you go, you might buy tickets to get into like a local attraction or whatever. It can all add up. And it was things that I was kind of thinking of as these are such a bargain for what they are. But you probably, you say you spend £100 on the coach trip and then you spend £100 on the weekend itself. That's £200 a go. And I was kind of getting to a point where I was doing that really quite regularly and not really thinking about it as spending money because I felt like I was getting such a good return on the money, which I was. But that still doesn't mean that I've got that kind of money to be throwing away every single month when I'm also trying to pay for things that I was thinking of as more like actual holidays. If you watched last week's video, you'll know my actual holidays, by which I mean things when I am away for two or more nights, that's how I'm going to categorise that this year. That comes from my holiday savings account and I save separately into that to pay for those holidays. But anything that is one night or less, whether it's a day trip or an overnight or a theatre ticket or any kind of experience, that's going to come from my budget this year because that is something that I have definitely let kind of run away in the past and when I look at what I spent on small trips last year I could have definitely been on like a big holiday and the irony is I probably wouldn't have committed to a big holiday because I'd have been like oh I don't know if I want to spend that much money when I'm going I'm going to Alaska this year so if you'd asked me last year did I want to spend you know two thousand pounds on going to New York or something I'd have been like hmm Actually, and I was, I actually was meant to go to New York last year and then I thought, no, I just want to put the money towards Alaska this year. But I still spent the equivalent amount of money doing these small trips that didn't really count in my head. So that is something that I definitely want to be getting under control this year and not letting run away with me. The next category is books slash entertainment. That is books, obviously, if I go in and buy books. It also is counting for digital downloads. So if I download either a book to my Kindle or an audiobook that has to come from my budget but also kind of related is anything that I buy uh, like a digital download of a film or if I bought a film but I couldn't tell you the last time I went and bought an actual Blu-ray so uh, not really likely to happen I don't think but I am um, despite the fact I have Netflix and I'm not taking my Netflix from my budget because my whole family uses that so it's not it's not something that I only pay that's for me, so I think of that more as a bill. So I have Netflix, but I quite frequently will find myself, you know, being like, oh, I've taken a fancy to watch this and it's not on Netflix, I'll just go and buy it and it's, you know, £6.99 or £7.99 or whatever it is to buy it, to digitally be able to watch it straight away. Again, it's something that probably adds up that I don't really think too much about. So all of those things, books, digital downloads, they need to come from my budget. That's the penultimate category. And the last category is homewares and stationery. So this is probably the, in terms of sort of real things that I might buy that are an exception to my no buy, homeware and stationery is the category that I don't think it's too problematic, but I don't want it to become problematic. So I am taking that from my budget this year. 
I'm not taking furniture from my budget. I talked about that in last week's video, but any kind of soft furnishings, scented candles, things like that have to come from my budget. The last thing that I just want to address is my Liberty subscription box. I said in my January inventory update, I am keeping going with that this year and I would explain it in this video. So what the Liberty box is, for anybody who doesn't know, it's a bit like your sort of standard beauty subscription box, but you don't get it monthly, you get it once a quarter. So it's not an overwhelming number of boxes to be getting delivered. It's for a year. It costs £20 a month, but what happens with that is that it becomes Liberty Credit. So essentially I almost pay Liberty £20 a month and get a Liberty £20 voucher back that is good in their beauty department only. So essentially the box is free because you get that full £20 a month in Liberty Credit. To me it makes sense to keep going with it because I can buy a lot of my beauty replacements from Liberty. It kind of works for me almost like it's like a sinking fund so that I'm paying £20 a month, I'm not thinking about it and then if I need to replace something one month I've got like a little bank there that I can get my replacement from rather than actually having to fork out whatever it is from my main bank. So that's kind of how it's been working for me in the past and I've really, really enjoyed it. Now obviously this year, rather than a replacement coming from my main bank as such, it would be coming from my budget. But I'm going to keep going with the Liberty boxes because I quite, I still like getting the box and it still makes sense in terms of how much money I spend with Liberty anyway to continue to just get the box for free essentially. But what I'm going to do in terms of tracking it, I'm not going to take £20 a month out of my budget, I'm going to take the whole amount out of each month as I spend it. So say for example, I buy my Kiehl's Vitamin C Serum, it's about £60. So say I need to replace that, I will have given Liberty £20 a month for the last three months, but I've not taken that £20 a month out of my monthly budget. However, if I spend that on a beauty replacement, I will then take £60 out of that month's budget and say that that £60 has been spent on that replacement within one month. Although I've actually not spent £60 technically that month on that item because I've taken it from the Liberty Bank of Credit that I have spent £20 a month on for the past three months, the reason that I'm doing it like that is because it gives me better ability to track what I am spending on replacements rather than counting £20 a month for to Liberty as its own category because although it kind of makes more sense for me to be using that credit for replacements I could also use it for scented candles which I would put expenditure wise under homewares so I would take from my budget the full value of a scented candle in the homeware category rather than the replacements category and it's also quite good to have that Liberty credit that if it gets to somebody's birthday or somebody buys a house and I'm going to a housewarming or whatever I could use that credit to buy them you know a scented candle or a bottle of perfume or something as a gift. Gifts for other people as I said last week are not banned under my no buy obviously because they're not something I'm buying for myself and they're also not something I'm taking from my budget because it's not something that comes up all that often that I really need to be like a budgeted thing. I could be using that Liberty credit, I could spend it on somebody else if I wanted to buy them a gift, I could, instead of spending the credit on myself, spend it on them, I could spend it on homewares or I could spend it on replacements. So I would rather track exactly where I've spent the money within my budget rather than tracking it as £20 a month to Liberty. So that is everything for this video. My next video actually will be my January money diary. So I will be telling you how I spent my budget in January, how I got along with my first month on the new budget system. So do make sure you've hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you are looking forward to that video and to my budgeting videos in general, please do like this video. I know it's really annoying and cringy when people ask for that, but it's, it's all to do with YouTube and the actual algorithm and whether it shows you my videos and whether it recommends them to other people and whatever. So if you want to see budgeting videos, please do like this one because YouTube then gets to know that you want to see videos about budgeting so that's helpful for you and it's also helpful for me because it shows my videos then to other people 
about budgeting. So it's a win-win really for both of us. So please do hit the like button if you haven't already. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't already and you want to be kept up to date with my no buy year for 2023 and my budgeting project. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate you spending this time with me and hopefully I will see you in my next video. Bye!